One of the main talking points when producers decide to go with FL Studio over Ableton is the piano roll functionality. Ableton's piano roll just isn't as user friendly and it's even missing some of the functionality that you can get in FL Studio. For example, strumming chords easily or randomizing the velocity and things like that in an intuitive way. And while you could use some other plugins to randomize these values in different ways, the problem is that you don't see the MIDI changing in real time and you can't see plugins while you're in the MIDI editor. But what if there was a free way to upgrade your piano roll so that you could update these MIDI notes in real time and put these FL Studio Bros to rest? It's night night time. Okay, that was kind of cringe, but anyways, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fearless, and today we're gonna go over how you can upgrade your Ableton piano roll to easily manipulate the different values in your MIDI notes way, way better than the stock functionality in Ableton. So let's get right into this. So here's the upgrade, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to get this in just a minute. But what's nice about this is it stays on the screen no matter what view you're in. So you can click between these different views and you can even move it around and it's gonna stay in place until you actually physically close it down. So what's cool about this is that you can actually just click to open it and it's gonna stay on the screen and you can zoom it to fit near your piano roll perfectly. So on my screen resolution, 150% works really well and I can place that right here and you wouldn't even be able to tell that it's not just built into Ableton like that. That's what's amazing. And I can go in here and edit these notes, click around, do what I gotta do with this, and it's gonna sit right there for us. This thing has a ton of functionality, but let me show you my favorites. So the first thing is the strumming. Now you're gonna wanna select the notes that you wanna affect. And what we can do is when we're in this slide, this first one right here, we have different tabs. When we're in slide, we can change this to whatever works for us. You can see there's a lot of things to pick here, but on the bottom, we have strum. And you can either strum the beginning, the start, or the ending. So if we just start to turn this up, you can see it starts to strum the notes over. And if we want to go ahead and press Control Z or Command Z, we can go back and you can even build up the tension so you can round it and give it a more precise strum to your liking. So now if we go ahead and strum it, it's gonna give it more of that unique characteristic. Now you might notice this first one right here, it kind of stopped at the line. If we pull this back, you can see it didn't actually go anywhere. And that's because we have this selected down here. And these options down here decide the edge behavior. So this one, it's gonna stop once it reaches the edge. But this one, for instance, is gonna bounce off and go the opposite way. This one is gonna wrap around and this one's gonna keep going. So actually this keep going one might've been the best to pick there. So let's Command Z, we have this selected and now let's start strumming boom so now when we go ahead and pull this out it should have kept going there we go it worked perfectly and if you don't want to physically move it with your mouse you could go over here to the start time and you could just shift everything over like this now one of my other favorite things to do is go ahead and select velocity right here and it's going to allow us to randomize the velocity and you may be saying wait ableton already has this velocity range which randomizes it every time, which is kind of a drawback. So you never know what the velocity is actually going to be. You know it's going to be within this range, but it's random every time. So there's use cases for that for sure. But you can also use this to randomize it as well by picking a number to randomize it by. But it's just not as intuitive or good as using this. Let me show you why. With this, it allows us to set the range. So this is how much plus or minus the velocities are allowed to go. And then we just use this knob right here to go ahead and control the velocity randomization. Let's check this out. As you can see, that is way more intuitive and way better than just clicking this a million times trying to get it right. But the fact that you can just move this around in circles like this, it really allows you to dial it in and see exactly how you want it to fit and it just gives you a way better result. And then from there, you can shift all the values up or down if you need to make them louder or quieter or you can actually spread them apart even further or crunch them together even more. So you don't have to be anal about this range because you can just use the spread to go ahead and change it afterwards. So you have access to each of these different properties right here, but we have two other tabs as well. Let's jump over to Swap. Swap allows you to change all these characteristics that are highlighted right here, and it swaps them between the notes that are actually highlighted. So if we only had two notes highlighted, it's gonna swap between the two different velocities or whichever ones that we have picked here. So maybe we just wanna do the velocities and you know the duration's the same on all of them. Um, the probability's the same, the release is the same, the velocity range, eh, let's just go for the velocity right now. So if we go ahead and randomize it, 
So this is another way that you can go ahead and mix up the velocities if you want to change them around a little bit. Now we can also jump over to set here and this allows you to set the different notes you have highlighted to an exact value. Instead of just randomizing it to a value, you set it to something exact. So maybe we want the note to be muted, deleted, or unmuted. We could do it that way. So let's pick deleted here. And you can see as we start to move it around, it's going to delete random notes. But if we jump over here and go to velocity, we can change velocities of random notes to an exact value of 64 or whatever you want to set it to. So it's still going to randomize which notes this gets affected to, but it's going to set them to an exact value instead of a range of values like on the previous ones. So you can see all the ones that are changing are going to that exact value down here about halfway you can see right there's where the 64 is so hopefully by now you're seeing how powerful this thing really is and if you guys want to grab it it is a hundred percent free and i'll leave the link in the description below it's to this github page right here and don't worry you don't have to do any coding or anything you can literally click right here to download it for either live 11 or live 10 depending on which one you have and you can go ahead and read all about the different functionality or just grab it and start playing around with it honestly that's the best way to learn regardless and if this video is valuable feel free to subscribe to the channel we upload videos like this in ableton every single week we love to have you as part of the gang also if you want to join our elite group of vip audio hackers we go over tons of advanced tutorials so if you're new to ableton or you need some help mixing or in these different areas we actually make these super in detail videos that aren't highly edited like our other videos so you get to see exactly the step-by-step -step approach so that way you don't miss anything and you get like a bunch of project files from the videos um, drum kits custom ones that don't get released to the public and all kinds of stuff so if you guys want to check that out i'm gonna leave a link to that as well in the description below it's called the vip audio hacker and besides that man if you want to see some other crazy functionality in ableton you're gonna want to check out this video next